So the next session is on gynecological cancers and the moderator is Dr. T.P. Sau. Uh, Dr. Rakesh Chopra is probably on his way, he has not yet reached here. So I will invite Dr. Sau to start the proceedings. Uh, with your permission, I will also invite the panelists, Dr. Kripa Bajaj, Dr. Stalin Choudhury Bala, Dr. Tasneem, Dr. Piyush Bajpai, Dr. Shushan Mittal, Dr. Vivek Agarwal and Dr. Suman Karant. Over to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, in next 45, can I have slides? Yeah, no issues. So, we'll be actually uh, looking at two trials, and uh, uh, I think this is one of the uh, two things that has changed in cervical cancer, at least in the non metastatic uh, arena, and it has come after a long uh, one and a half years or two decades, actually. Something has changed. And it will be interesting to find out what the panel thinks about, and we will be also we'll be looking into interlace, and that is the new adjuvant approach to chemo radio before we give chemo radiotherapy. And one we are going to look at the keynote A18. Yeah, we should, we should, we should. Doctor Bansal, please. I, I was going to tell that that will be nice. So uh, one is. Uh, uh, the other one will be adding uh, uh, of uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor to the concurrent uh, chemo radiotherapy regimen. So this is what we are going to discuss. So we'll be stick. Uh, we'll be sticking to these two parts. Uh, this is something which we as medical oncologists are very poor at. I know that we always look at the uh, part when the radiation is told that concurrent dena hai, so then we give, and then we otherwise go look at the stage four B and others. So, Dr. Indu, uh, good to have you here. And uh, just tell me a very quick question before you go to the main studies. 1A, A1, 1A2 is done. Surgery is the thing. And fertility preserved surgery is the choice. There's no controversy on that. Okay. Uh, B1 would be again surgery? Both the options would be there. Okay. But surgery, if fertility preserved can be done, would be preferred. It can, yeah. That's fair. So, I'm yeah. rounding it off the initial parts. So, we are pretty much on page. B2. 1B2. 1B2 goes for radiation, concurrent chemo. Okay. So here also surgery can be preferred in some, but the, the preference starts changing to chemo radiotherapy. So here the things start changing where the chemo radiation really comes in. So I just brought this up because uh, as Madongs, I know that we are pretty weak on the stage one part. Uh, B, A, A1, A2, B1, B2, we really, very few of us who really do into the multidisciplinary know it. So this is where I wanted that from 1B2 is there something that the chemo radiotherapy starts coming in and then the B3 what is coming in the, 20, the recent one. Uh, that's where the chemo radiotherapy really comes in. Nothing yes, is B3 there. definitely yeah. onwards. So but B3. 2A, certain 2A can still be take, considered for surgery. For surgery. Yeah. But, but uh, chemo radiotherapy can, should be the, is the preferred, preferred option. Choice, yeah. Okay. So, and from then on it's chemo radiotherapy all. Okay. So this I will not ask any questions. So that is well done, well said. So we'll go forward. So now let's assume that we have a stage 3B and that's where uh, we will go into and also look into stage 2A. So that is where the interlace looks into. So I am looking at 3 and 3B and 4A together, I am clubbing it together and the others will be the rest of the group which I am taking that are considered feasible for chemo radiotherapy and not operable. So that we will put two sets and that is will be important when we draw conclusions of these trials actually. So, for a patient with stage uh, 3, uh, B and 4A, Dr. Indu, are you pretty happy? What is the overall uh, five years uh, survival you expect in your patient lot? Have you ever analyzed that? So, in stage 3B, usually the survival, uh, five year survival ranges up to 60%. 60% 55 60% 60 what are you looking 60 at 55 to 60% in stage 4a drops down to 15 to 20% 20 to 20%, 20 20%. so if you don't use any other targeted drugs or so, so at this point we have been using concurrent CTRT okay so i'll go to across the medical oncologist kripa uh, it, has it been only cisplatin to you because some of the trials even one of the trials which i'm going to speak into has also allowed carboplatin even if you look at the kala trial the durva data they had 10% patient used concurrent carbo 
So are we comfortable with carboplatin as a treatment option as concurrent? Certainly, sir. If patient is cisplatin ineligible, I would offer carboplatin. So you do sure. AUC2 carboplatin? Yes. And you are pretty okay? You feel it's not a non-inferior regimen to cisplatin? It is certainly non-inferior regimen. Okay. Like a, we see like a Pakli Carbo versus Pakli in, in cervix cancer, okay. it's like fine to go. Okay. And only the car, with Carbo CTRT, there is a more myelosuppression as per the data as well. Okay. Uh, anyone wants to bring in the cisplatin versus carboplatin as a concurrent regimen in this panel? Anyone? Or if you add carboplatin, would you go for the second agent as gemcitabine or a paclitaxel weekly? No? Yes, yeah, cisplatin is a done thing. So, yeah. for cisplatin ineligible patients who like to combine it, the carbo with something else. So, you do that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so I think yeah. the, the traditional teaching goes that the patient is cisplatin and ineligible, then, you know, uh, patients do equally well with definitive RT alone. That is also uh, one of the ways. But uh, the, uh, the data with uh, carboplatin is, is not uh, uh, so convincing. So we make here Kabrins in the third option that if it's a splatin inlet. Yeah. So we make which data? Because I do in my practice based on the articles which I have read and the paper which I have read that if the patient is cisplatin ineligible, carboplatin adds on to the good compliance rate, reduces anemia rate, and patients generally feel well. And I don't think. I can come across any RCT which has shown uh, that you should not Actually, use carboplatin. Uh, yeah, you want to respond to that quickly? What I, I want to say that I, I have not come across any RCT which says that the carboplatin, uh, you know, is, is, has, has produced an overall survival advantage just as this platin. So, uh, in my uh, practice, uh, you know, uh, the threshold for giving carboplatin is a bit high. Of course, patients oh, okay. uh, who are very fit and can, uh, you know, uh, so even in the cisplatin ineligible uh, 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 fraction, if the patients are really fit and uh, and I think that they can uh, tolerate carboplatin, then only I, I will I, give. I'll ask but the, the threshold is a bit high. I'll ask the radiation oncologist this question and take it from here because we had moved to the question. Are you comfortable? My question is very different. Are you comfortable for the group which you select for a radical RT? not to do chemotherapy of any shot and just go for it. No, I would be happy to add carboplatin at least. I mean, uh, and uh, so there is not much convincing data which says that you give only six days of, uh, you give only radiation and that would be Actually, sufficient. the data is that you add chemo to radiation that is superior to radiotherapy alone. That has been done. So, so the thing which says that six days of radiation that uh, for we use that for head and neck cancers. Uh, like if, you, if the, you are not able to give chemotherapy, then you can give six days of radiation in spite of, instead of just five days. But for cervix, I haven't come across any yeah. such evidence. So uh, just, just one point is that, that if I look across my practice in the last five years, who are those patients where I was not able to give cisplatin? And when I see whether I was able to give carboplatin in those patients, I am really doubtful because those were patients where okay. they, they were having CKD, they were having creatinine of 6, we'll 7, we'll you move understand? Forward. We'll move forward. Those so, are the so, so the take home should be that for a concurrent... If the patient is having creatinine in 6 or 7, then would that has you to be first do a stent or something? That's obstructive neuropathy. So, that done. So, the point that is made, being made and emphasized by all of us, most of us actually is, we like to add something. Cisplatin is the gold standard, we'll do that. If not, carboplatin is being done and that has been practiced across. But yes, there is data even in the Kala subset, if you look at although the patient number only 10%, carboplatin did fare worse than the cisplatin. That's done. And we should not be jumping to carboplatin, at least in cervix. Cisplatin 40 per meter square weekly is the way to go forward and that should remain that way. Okay. Uh, so, it was told that the PFS and OS hovers around that percentage of 55 to 60 and there are a lot of relapses. Piyush, uh, pretty happy because we are happy now for 20 years and we are pretty happy with this data. Suddenly with two trials coming in, the third also out, we feel unsatisfied. We want more. So are you okay to that 60% not good enough? We need something more? Okay. That is not working. Hmm. Yeah, please, please, please. So, so, so if you're looking for more, 
I have given you the third option. It's an adjuvant or a new adjuvant or you want to add something to chemoradiotherapy because now we have data sets for all the three, although with different results. So what do you want? Which one? Interlace is uh, uh, yeah, new adjuvant. Okay. We have we had had trials before also. I'll show you that. It's not the first trial. It was one of the trials which had a positive Im impact. That's why we're speaking about it. Which showed the new adjuvant strategy. Mm -hmm. And also I think so there is an Indian paper as well uh, about the new adjuvant strategy. So uh, there was this small uh, conclusion from the meta-analysis that short course low dose chemotherapy could be probably a benefit. And this is what Interlace actually adopted. But uh, this is the only trial and it has certain, you know. We'll, we'll discuss about that. So this is of course looking attractive, uh, but of course to immediately adopt if in case you are asking. So, that. so, so, so you are still, you want to wait. I would love more data. Okay, of course, so, but so, I so, so I'll show the data, data and then we'll take it up. Now I'll show the data. So this is the interlaced data. It is induction chemotherapy followed by chemo radiotherapy versus chemo radiotherapy alone as the first line treatment, and that's the interlaced study design. They have taken uh, B1 with node positive. That's pretty well, much people to understand. They have taken B1, but has to be node positive. From B2 onwards, it could be either way without also. So the B1 had to be node positive. Point number one, squamous, adenosquamous, and they, if no node should be above the aortic bifurcation. That is where the cutoff really happened. So I'm telling you the salient points. And the patient should not have received any prior radiotherapy, pelvic. Any pelvic radiotherapy prior was not allowed. The PFS was, uh, was the primary endpoint and the co-primary endpoint was the OS. The secondary was the pattern of relapse, quality of life, time to next treatment. The 500 patient data, and if you look at it, the induction chemotherapy was a paclitaxel and carboplatin 80 pacli and AUC2 carboplatin 6 weeks. And then we had a chemo radiotherapy and the radiotherapy was 40 to 50.4 gray and then they had to go for the inter, uh, brachytherapy and that had to go up to 70, around 80 gray. If uh, that's around what it is, 76 to 80, that's what it is. And the standard arm was what we normally do. So with this data set, I'll now come down to the patient characteristics. So if you look at the patient characteristics, Dr. Uh, Suman, uh, to, to you, I am, look at the FIGO stage. And if I look at the stage 3B and 4A, this is an important thing all of us have to note in the interlace. And it constitutes approximately 14% of the patient load total. So how do you read this FIGO staging, the patient characteristic? What is your take on this part of the um, of, of the patient characteristics so and, and also also you can take along the node one the node positive was only in the around 40 60 were node negative yeah. uh, so this is i mean I, I think this is the problem with the study because the representation of stage it's, three and it's not a problem yeah, I mean, this is the characteristics one of the characteristics of the study was that there's lesser representation of a higher risk group of population okay where we would expect the maximum benefit from an eo adjuvant chemotherapy okay and as opposed to the keynote trial which had more higher risk population more node positive population so here again the node positivity is just 43 percent again it is lesser so I think this is probably, I mean, probably they should have had better representation of the higher risk group. So could it not be, Dr. Bala, that if it was, Suman is telling it's a lower risk group, so it is still showing advantage yeah, in all those. Coming. So if in the higher one, it will show more risk. advantage. What is your take on that? Yeah, possibly yes. Sir. Possibly yes. yes. Okay. And uh, uh, in so, the real world, what we practice, uh, the 14 percent is very less. Yeah. Because at least 30 to 35 percent, minimum of 30 to 35 percent will be stage 3 and 4 year. Okay. Yeah. So, so we can't say that it was lower risk because please notice that 80 percent of patients were node positive in the uh, induction chemotherapy arm and 40 percent were node negative. Uh, only node positive in the uh, yeah. that so is it the, had more node positive patients. I understand. Also. So, so that is will be a so, problem yeah. because in a randomized trial, I would expect the yes, equality. That's the whole issue. It is so, not well balanced. So it was not well balanced. Yes, but was. even then, there is the the data is in favor of the induction. 
you had more number okay. of node positive patients okay. this is one point and second is that that what we can understand is more applies to stage 2 because 70% of your patients were stage 2 so, so i it see more that applies it more to applies stage to, 2 yeah, so yeah. tomorrow when a stage 3b comes in what do you do yeah. i mean you know what, what i could take from this trial was that there probably stage 2 and stage 3 are the patients which are more represented and there what it applies stage 1b i mean there were hardly any patients so it doesn't apply to stage 1 on and stage 4 again there were less number of patients so that is one unmet need Hore. you know you should want to say something uh, probably what i feel is uh, this is following figos 2008 yeah. classified now uh, figo 2008 classifier i mean there's a, a drastic change of what uh, 2014 or 16 the change of figo took the place. 2018 and Where the 2008 if you look into yeah. the main difference happens in the, the 1b3 imaging, comes in the abdominal imaging actually yeah, is the, in and the node positivity does come in yes. in a prominent so way this all this all came in 2014 2008 is actually largely clinical so if 2b we are we could have a lot of uh, you know upstaging happening if we do the imaging whether the trial so we do not have the detailed paper whether the trial all the centers are using a uniform staging methodology they had in terms to. of imaging this was a 2008 that, they had to uh, so that that was one thing whether ct scan or ultrasound uh, is being used in mexico or you know ct scan is used being used in uh, uk so they had to stage basically we really do not know the details of it so that needs to be looked at i come to a radiation oncologist looking at this patient characteristics you are comfortable or you feel that we are missing out on the little more higher stage and the 2008 and 18 the figo classification came in into that had to come in do you feel that that the percentage of the difference in staging will be too substantial with this so definitely i mean there could be i can't say definitely but just yes, definitely there should be should have been more representation of stage 3b and okay. 4a patients okay so and anyone wants to tell sir yeah please so uh, why are you asking this question uh, the uh, reason i'm saying this... is that one minute the uh, sudeep is here yeah. uh, dr sudeep gupta's paper included i think stage 2 only they did not include stage 3 in neoadjuvant chemo followed by surgery uh, Right. They, they, so they did not they, include stage 3. Sir's paper looked into as the UORTC paper looked into very classical. They looked into did new adjuvant chemotherapy add to uh, with surgery was a superior so to chemotherapy. So they asked the same question. The same question is being asked with interlace. But like why no, are sir. we harping so much on stage 3? Uh, That sir, is my question. Sir, is the same question being asked because you are the PI of the other one? Yes, no. so the hello yeah. yeah so the question in our study was also neoadjuvant but yeah. it was a comparison of two strategies neoadjuvant followed by surgery Such versus concurrent chemoradiation here it is neoadjuvant chemotherapy or not followed by concurrent chemoradiation and this trial actually is very similar to dr lalit kumar's very old trial of randomized uh, trial where he did neo adjuvant chemotherapy or not followed by definitive radiotherapy yes, in which actually there was no benefit or perhaps a slight detriment of neo adjuvant treatment sir you want to say something sir i think there is another layer to it look at the countries which are represented yes sir it was predominantly uk Absolutely. mexico no. india had so, only so 2% of the therefore, therefore your 3 b's and 4 a's are only going to be represented from the countries which are down below you know yeah. uh, so uh, there is one point i will not go into it because our details discussion will be on something else the radiation technique that was used in interlace has to be spoken about again i am not expert but as i read through it was more of a f- uh, yeah please yeah um, actually i was called at the last minute so i have not yeah, read no the issues. papers but what is i there, no full paper is not out no I have not gone yeah, even yeah, to please, this please, much. Please, I was please. just called in at the yeah, last. Yeah, sure, minute. sure, please. So, but as per this uh, report, the three D conformal radiation is used in sixty percent patients, yeah. and IMRT is only forty percent. So, which is not what we routinely do. So, uh, we have changed I mean, practice yes. since. So, yeah. uh, so if three uh, D CRT is more used, then hematological toxicity would be much higher. If we are using IMRT, then we are able to reduce the hematological toxicity. Uh, that is one point, and. Uh, 
the brachytherapy is was also not image guided brachytherapy which so people started also, using. that would lead to toxicity differences yeah. definitely yeah, yeah basically that's it and because both the arms use the same type of radiotherapy so even it is balanced for that so that we have to accept that but point said it, but one point what you wanted i wanted to make out in this paper is people if you look at it nowadays the newer trials are having i i am imrt more of 80% and more so that is what we are shifting towards imrt and what you rightly put forward the tolerability is better and there are papers coming out probably efficacy is also being looked at in a protocol where there is induction chemotherapy followed by concurrent ctrt definitely imrt would be a would make one. a lot of difference because okay. hematological toxicity would be drastically reduced okay so now come to the adherence and uh, dr bala pretty happy because if you look at the new adjuvant perfect the adherence was good complete six weekly cycles was around 85% that's fair enough and the five cycles were around 92%. So majority, yeah. if you look at 80%, adder, 80% could be delivered in nearly everyone. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Adherence and, and, good. And, and, and if you look at it, the induction chemo radiotherapy, when they receive, the completing of the chemotherapy cycles actually drops in the patient who has received new adjuvant chemotherapy. So her point becomes more pertinent that toxicity really matters and that's where radiation technique will matter when we start new adjuvant. So that is one point which I wanted to make and this is something all of us will accept it. So this is the PFS data. Uh, the PFS, if you look at, uh, at around five years, it looks superior with the hazards of 0.65. All of you have seen this. The three years PFS was Darin, also... Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, go back. Before going on to the results, yeah, yeah. they had predicted, malab, their prediction about the result was in you know, a difference of hazard ratio of 0.65. Yes, there. Both in OPFS and OS. OS. Where did they reach this 35% improvement? Was there a preceding based on which these authors, because 0.65 is a very, very, uh, you know, uh, what you say, a very, uh, the, they thought that it will I, I, be positive. I'll, I'll come to, I, I cannot tell you where exactly the that 0.65 came through because the whole paper will tell us, but I'll tell you the trials on which, based on which interlace was formed. So I can tell you that. And I'll come to that when I tell you why one was successful and probably other was not. Uh, this was the co-primary endpoint. Again, the hazards was 0.61. And look at the three years OS and the five years OS, it was looking great and the curves are looking, going out, diverging. The distant meds as expected in the chemotherapy was lesser. I'll not go into that. So uh, now a question to the panel and we can start off with again Kripa, then we can go to uh, that from that side. The doses and schedule, yes. uh, anything that worked for it for interlace because previously also we had data sets where we had looked at new adjuvant and one of the data was GEMSYS. And that GEMSYS trial was not positive. So now with that thing, what do you think worked for this and did not work for the last trial? It is less than 50 days the treatment completion has to be uh, done in this trial. So okay. Maybe that... Uh, so, so the that adherence to the protocol and we are able yes. to manage toxicity better, able to complete treatment better. better. Okay. Any, more, any points from that also side? Also patient profile, I would say here, if you see the 2B is predominant here. Though the positive and negative, you see the negativity is like more, almost 60 percentage. And there is added advantage, I, I rightly agree with Dr. Stalin, uh, it's an early stage, the advantage is significantly high. Okay. And the GEMSYS one, the three, uh, uh, stage three is like predominant in that. Yeah, two and three, they had. Uh, Suman, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, I, I actually had the opportunity to interact with Mary McCormick. So what her, her point yeah. was, she maintained the schedule, the strict schedule of the radiation. Okay. So she said that if a patient even had a platelet of 30,000, she would skip the chemo, but she would go ahead with radiation. So radiotherapy was to complete it. Irrespective of what the platelet count, okay, they would not okay, hold radiation. Okay. So for her, she says it was the adherence to the radiation protocol that finally led to the success. But uh, but the radiotherapy protocol was adhered in both arms. So how would that make a difference in the survival then, or in the PFS? Because the technique when we are starting off. Maybe I can. Yeah. Yeah. Please. But maybe I can add to this point that. Patients who have received neoadjuvant chemotherapy, in those patients, when you give concurrent CTRT, uh, there are some drops because of drops yeah. in drops in platelet counts. And as she said that, uh, even if the platelet count was, you said 30,000, did I hear it right? 30. Uh, so even if, thir so e normally, uh, if the platelet count drops below 50,000, we hold radiation. So, uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I'm not going to that here's a part. I'll go more into what has been, uh, put forward and what is science and that we'll discuss. Okay, we all agree to the point that radiotherapy completion should be within a 50 to 60 days period. We should not linger it and it does matter. So, yeah. 
low, the intensity of Pakli Carbo was maintained and the radiation was started within one week of the last Pakli last Carbo. Pa okay. So this, the chemosensitivity and radio sensitization made that impact. Uh, there is a beautiful meta-analysis which was published few years back. You want to say something, Vivek, and then I'll do that. No, I, I just wanted to, you know, stress that it was the, the short duration of neoadjuvant uh, treatment. I mean, you know, probably if, it, if the duration would have been large, four, four cycles or three, four cycles of three weekly, probably the toxicity okay. would have, you know, uh, led to uh, decreased chemo radiation. And what I want to say is that this is like a very proof of concept study where you gave neoadjuvant treatment for systemic disease and you had an 8% distant DFS advantage which is the actual DFS advantage, which translated into an 8% OS advantage. So very proof of concept study where systemic therapy leads to improved distance. Today you know, Vivek is saying very therapy. strong words, you know, yeah. that those words are very like statement in, in inverted. So look at this. Uh, this is the data set of the cisplatin gem trial. And there's something which I will show you, which has shown in the meta-analysis and how it correlates and probably one of the factors which plays Cisplatin was 50 milligram per meter square only one in the three week period. And if you look that part and then it was once in three weeks. Okay. Now this was the meta analysis of 21 randomized trials. And if you go into that staging was all around majorly it was stage three, stage two. We had some one B, rarely stage four. This is the data. If you look at the test for heterogeneity for that interaction, which you look at the extreme and look for two things that worked for them. One was less than 14 days and more than 14 days cycles. So it t told that if you had a cycle period of chemotherapy more than 14 days and someone who was less than 14 days, the patient who had frequent uh, shorter intervals, that worked. And the longer interval did not. Number two, that test of heterogeneity which was passing was the cisplatin dose intensity. More than and less than 25 milligram meter square per week, which translated to 75 per meter square. And unfortunately, both these things were not there in the gem, gem arm and fortunately interlace did that. So if you look at the interlace, it was a weekly schedule. And if you look at the graphs on the uh, meta-analysis we showed and look at the topmost and the downmost. If you have more than 14 days is the downward and if more, less than 14 days is the upper one. So this is a very important thing that probably is coming out, which was told 10 years before of 12 years before a publication, which interlace is showing us that weekly and the dose intensity prior to the new adjuvant does matter. And this was probably proven in this interlace trial. That's one of my thinking that this is a very important point. Also remember if you're using cisplatin, the dose intensity weekly more than 25 meters square should be there if someone is not using carboplatin. So this is two things which I thought the house should know. Uh, outback trial, all of you know? Yes. So to all those, it was a adjuvant trial. Chemo radiotherapy followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. <laughs> Concept is that there, if you have the earlier trials meta-analysis, all we knew that one cycle or two cycle post chemo radiotherapy, there were superior survival, uh, oncological outcomes. So Outback came in, just published few months back. And this was a negative trial. Any ideas why it was a negative trial? Anyone? Uh, Bala or Piyush? So it was a uh, high dose chemotherapy? I mean, three no. weekly, three. Partly carbo same, 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 same. Uh, we, we do the cisplat concurrent chemotherapy followed by four cycles of paglicabo. That's it. That's the output. So, okay. Uh, yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think I read it in one Please, of the, please, please. Yeah, one of the papers actually said that probably the issue is once you've completed radiation, you've taken away the sensitive clones and you've left behind only the resistant clones. Yeah. And probably that is the reason why this trial failed. Yes. Um, uh, there's a, this is one of the bigger points that is coming out that chemo radiotherapy has taken care of the, all the sensitive clones, the resistant clones are left behind. So adjuvant chemotherapy really had nothing to work on the sensitivity part. The second point which came up, if you look at this trial design and look at the numbers, just to put things short, 22% patients did not receive adjuvant chemo radiotherapy because of the post chemo radiotherapy issues which persisted and they did not take adjuvant chemotherapy alone. And those who did, again 20-25% did not complete the four cycles. So this is, has been the two major issues on which 
the concurrent uh, the adjuvant uh, trial was con it was a uh, trial which was not positive so outback trial was considered a negative because of these two reasons this is the upper one is the survival curve the lower one is the pfs curve one more thing that all of us should learn is the pfs curve if you look at it the 3 years and the 5 years you see the relapse is still happening if you look at the pfs hazards of 3 years and 5 years you see the curves going down further and the relapse is still happening even at 5th year Dr. So one of the also point in outback trial was that they included a good prognostic group uh, patients. I think more than 35-40% belong to good prognostic group. Means? Uh, they, I think early stage was uh, higher compared to... It, this nothing can be better than interlaced study groups. To I know, no, no, I'm talking about outback. Why so, did so, it so fail? The, the, so the, what the I'm saying is... The profile of interlaced is the will, best will, one. <laughs> no, no, sir, I, I, I would disagree that interlaced was a good profile because 80% were node positive. Agreed, you know, sir. right back in 2008, node positive did not come into okay. the FIGO, but right now they would all come into stage 3. 3. So this applies to stage two, stage three. It's not a bad population. Stage yeah, yeah. no, three. it is not a it is not a good at population at all, but relatively a good at. So I think the uh, staging was nearly the same. Um, I, I looked into it actually. So I'll in the next five, ten minutes I'll go to the uh, other trial and then we'll combine both of it and then go forward. Interlace if something is left, you can just come in. No. Uh, so you're going to whether interlace is a practice changing or not? You'll we, tell we'll, we'll combine okay. both. We'll combine both. Uh, now I'll go to the second one. The second way how we can go forward is the uh, Keynote A18. It's a pembrolizumab, 200 once in three weeks with chemo radiotherapy, and then continue the pembro for 15 cycles versus placebo instead of pembro. Very clear cut, simple. And here you had stage one B2. The B1 part is not there. And we have to uh, once I come to a patient characters, you will see the difference. The B2 node positive had to be there with that, or stage three and four A. That was it. Again, it was a bigger trial, a thousand sixty. That was the interlace was a five hundred trial, and the primary endpoint is PFS, and a co-primary is again the OS. And if you look at the secondary endpoint, same what as we normally look into. And this is the patient characteristics what I wanted to show you. Look at those who were node positive. And if you look at the patients who are node positive, if you combine all patients, even for the paraerotic nodes and everything, it constitutes around 82 8 to 83%. So I, 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 Vivek, now I understand why I was telling it, because I'm going to compare these two trials, because these are the two things which we have to compare also. So this is where the 80% patients are node positive. If you look at the uh, three, uh, and this is FIGO 2014, huh? not the 2018 again. So we have to understand it's the intermittent, intermittent one. So if we and look at the uh, uh, stage 3, 4A, 57%. When we had a 12% there, although the FIGO part plays a role, that is different. But these are the two important. Third part to my radiation oncologist, here IMRT or VMAT came into 90%. So the stringent things comes into when this trial was done, the Kala trial, the Durva data is also the similar data, where IMRT was pushed through the radiation, uh, the intensity was maintained. And most of the patients had PDL1 positive, 94%, because common cell in cervix, all of us know that. The co primary endpoint of PFS, the data is very short. The follow up is very, very small, and it is not even like two years old. So it is around 18 months. It's, and the graph starts separating at around third month, and the PFS is around 0.89, which is significant at this point. Uh, it looked similar for all the groups. And if you look at it, the OS is getting there. Hazards looks very good, better than the PFS. But if you look at it, it's not sexually significant. It's immature at this point. Expected. The survival is very short. And uh, the uh, duration of response is little better. And safety is nothing much. The quality of life was not deteriorated. Yeah, please, Amol, tell me. So I just wanted to have a comment from the radiation oncologist. Are you happy with the dose of the radiotherapy which was given in this particular pembrolizumab trial? Because... There is one of the reasons why they have said that Pembro trial succeeded and the Durva trial failed, that the radiotherapy dose was inferior and in fact the control arm of this trial did inferior to the control arm of the Durva trial. So 
are you happy with the dose of the radiation which is given here? And the intensity was not probably maintained. And that is one of the explanation why this came positive. Kala, and kala the work. intensity was not maintained? Kala, the intensity was maintained. Huh? And the Kala's control arm did better than the... No, I think the radiation dose arm. is a dot on that range on which... So, there is a lot of discussion saying that the uh, so dose actually, is inferior. Actually, this graph shows less than 78%. Yeah. Less yeah. than 70 gray and uh, more than 70 gray. More than 70 is 91. is 91. So actually it's just 70 but normally we try no, to... More than, more than equal to. Uh, normally goes to up to 85. 80, we go 80. up to 80 to 85. It, yeah. So that's the point drawback point. of this trial. No, no, I mean, they had underperformed. The control arm has underperformed. They have given less radiation dose. I, I think uh, what details I, I, I have... Again, the full text is not out but even if whatever I have gone through, the radiation is particularly the same. It has not changed anything. No, but the control arm of this trial versus control arm of Kala, that is why the Durva trial is negative because the Durva trial, trial is, is negative. I'll come to that. There are two more than one reason why Sir, Durva is I negative. I think when when both the arms have received radiation equally, then I think we should assess. No, 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 and, 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 and this has been a standard the standard. Is different. Why rate. one drug has worked and why other is not worked? I, I'll, I'll come into that. Same. No, but for uh, doctor, uh, yeah. for radiation, for cervix, radiation dose definitely matters. Those I mean, matters. Uh, so, 45 gray to the pelvis and then 8 gray in 3 fractions or something like that to the uh, I'll, I'll, dose I'll, is I'll, very, very important. I'll, 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 I'll tell you the last line tells it. The last line tells the median dose which was received was 88. 87. See the last one. They're same. I, I, I've gone through I, exact details. It's very difficult to pull out with so many papers. But look at the last line. And it is that it was approximately the mean radiation dose for total cervix EQD2 dose was 87 versus 87. And that was 70 versus 76. So what I mean to say is, what I mean to say is the radiotherapy arm for all the trials which are telling has been now standardized because for the last 20 years that has been the only thing that is standardized. So I don't think anyone has changed that and will dare to change that. So only the IMRT things comes in, in the interlace and this, the IMRT is 90%. So now with this, if that is okay and we consider the radiotherapy was adequate and the way we do it as per the range. And I, uh, peop, uh, Kala trial is again one more trial, similar patient load. And if you look at it, it was a negative trial. So now what does the panel to say about now these three trials? First we'll go to Kala versus the keynote, because that is immune checkpoint. Kala is a trial of Durva instead of Pembro. Rest all remains the same. So please, anyone in the panel wants to take this? Why one was positive, why other was negative? Uh, about the quality of life, uh, what I wanted to say was uh, there is no detrimental decrease in the quality of life when they started the concurrent immune checkpoint and that is what uh, was the uh, thing that was told as per this graph. I not read it. May I know what was the uh, metastatic rate or in, in the two arms? Metastatic rate? I'm mean? just, I mean, did, uh, syst sorry, systemic failure. Sorry, uh, local failure or systemic failure. Was uh, there any difference? No. Yeah, I want to say I that. think the Kala trial, what I read was that yeah. the population of node positivity, their definition of node positivity was a slightly better population as compared to the keynote. The keynote may, I think it was more than like two or more nodes and more than 1.5 centimeters was their uh, strict criteria. Okay. So they had a higher see, risk population see, as a better She's population. the only one who has read uh, the Dr. Tiwari's review article on Dr. this. <laughs> 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 okay. So what they have told, because the full text is not available, it is only in that manuscript. You have these two lines, actually. Uh, uh, so in his paper, he writes, and he has put it in his the, the uh, discussion slides in the SMO also. Uh, they put forward that uh, if you look into the things, uh, Kala probably had a little better subset of patients than the A18. The inclusion criteria for A18 included two or more nodes should be at least there radiologically positive and the size should be more than 15 millimeter. In contrast, the Kala was one also could be enough and one centimeter was the thing. So basically he tried to point out that the bulk of the disease load was bigger in the Pembro trial rather than in the Durvat one. So that could be the reason and the, he ends up with the thing that on longer follow up because the on the comparison these two this is a better subset you might still get an advantage but that is all theory that's one part. Second part that one has, what has been proposed is the PDL1 and the PD1 blocker. The PD1 it's on the lymphocytes and the PDL1 is on the tumor cells and 
that variability could be also playing a role so it comes down to if there's approval for one can we just interchange the approvals if the drug is coming at a cheaper rate the answer is no you should not so that is again this trial is proving the third thing that is pointed uh, point being pointed out is uh, if you look at all concurrent chemo radiotherapy with immunotherapy concurrent uh, trials most of these trials are coming out negative is that that the radiation is hampering the immune system as such the T lymphocytes and the other thing that is causing this I am just putting up this is in the discussion of the Kala and this is what people should think about I think the Pacific 2 is uh, negative yeah so concurrent whenever immune checkpoint is coming in most of the trials are getting negative A18 is the exception to that yeah I mean, I can talk about SBRT situation, not in a 1.8 or 2 gray per fraction, but when you give SBRT and immunotherapy, then definitely radiation because of new adds, uh, because it leads, it converts the non-sensitive cells and it converts it into a vaccine. Yeah. I mean, actually there is more uh, generation of T cells and all. So SBRT, if you give a high dose per fraction, specifically say 8 gray per fraction or something, and uh, SBRT plus immunotherapy, it actually is beneficial, but that. in cervix we don't do that. Uh, yes, and second thing is this is all hypothesis generating. People are trying to find out the reasons. So I told you that also. And right. this is again, if you look at the node positive for the Kala was 73, that was 83. So you have little but lesser bulkier disease. And this is the data set which tells you, uh, although it is separating out, it is not significant and the PFS is, in, uh, is a negative trial as per that. So we have discussed this. So why did one succeed and one fail? The inclusion criteria, PDL one versus PD one, and also the thing that immunotherapy, uh, the alteration that immunotherapy does to the thing. So, so there is one head and neck cancer trial. Yeah. Uh, it's a phase two trial in which they have uh, done a comparison between concurrent PEMRO with CTRT versus sequential, in which they did CTRT and then later PEMRO was started. Uh, for one year and the sequential arm was better than the concurrent arm. It so did. a similar concept uh, where uh, a phase two trial. Phase two trial so okay. in head and neck. But the overall trial was negative yes. in head and neck also. So it has only worked in cervix magic. Yeah, that A18 is the only one. And and even if you look at the uh, the Nevo trial for more than fifty percent that negative trial that the one of the thing is that more patients in Nevo took radiotherapy, uh, even the lung cancer. So I'll, I'll now skip into what uh, Dr. Amish wanted us to tell. So now patients with deep pockets. So everything is there on the table. Huh? I am not going to put the Indian scenario now. We'll come to the conclusion with the Indian scenario. So starting from Vivek, what is your approach now for a patient with 3B? Very clear. Uh, I'll take, take two things, 2A and 3B. If you can take two, take it and tell 2A what will you do and 3B what will you do? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, both of the data are A and if the, if the patient probably, you know. We make uh, direct answers. So, uh, I, I, would, I would give NA, uh, NACT. To which one? Both? Yeah, or yeah. or two, uh, two a something different and 3B is different? So, 2A probably NACT and 3B may, maybe you know ICI See, with ICI maintenance. Kolkata is changing Vivek. <laughs> Mumbai was very straightforward. <laughs> I know we're coming down. Yeah. Really. So man, question. Uh, to, wait, same question. Quick, quickly we have to go more. Uh, I'm waiting for the OS data for the. Uh, what will you do? We know everything only now. NACT as of now. So only NACT for both the subsets. For both the subsets. Okay, Piyush. Yes, NACT for TB for now. Uh, 2A, if you said, then I would rather go for chemo radiation only. Okay, so 2A, you uh, will we'll just I, not I, give I anything as NACT. Very good. Both subsets NACT. NACT. So 2A, no NACT. Stage no NACT, CTRT. Yes, sir. and stage 3 NACT. Stage 3 B is NACT. Rupa? From 2B onwards, I would choose to give uh, NACT, sir. 2A, no. Yeah. From 2B onwards. 2A, so 2A, no. Onward, no. So, you will still differentiate between the 2A and 2B is here. Okay, from 2B onwards, it is concurrent uh, immune checkpoint for no one. Uh, yeah, I mean, as uh, of let's, uh, Big bulky nodes, quite big disease load because you had that, every one of you told that uh, the nodes are negative, more in the interlace. So, that does not play a role here. I feel NACT plays more ro role than uh, ICA, sir. If patient is having deep pockets, I have said, 
I will definitely add NACT and uh, as well IC also, but not only IC, not only keynote region, I will not use So, uh, so I will put the fourth one now. <laughs> NACT with IC followed by ICCTRT. Come on. Uh, I will ask this and then I will come to so you. If you. As ask, a radiation oncologist, yeah, yeah, different As question. a radiation oncologist, yeah. if you ask me, for 2A, definitely CTRT. I okay. would not, not consider NACT. And for 3B, we are still not very much convinced about adding NACT because the complications and the toxicity and the dropout rate after NACT in in, uh, in daily scenarios is more. I mean, I don't know how much was it because these... Dropout rates were not there. The, no, the these, address was these are under trial conditions. Yeah. Let's talk about real world situation. So once the we start doing it, we'll know. Yeah. First one. Forest plot for which one? Interlace. I have two minutes just. Yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Forest plot, I don't think Interlace had one. No, no, Interlace did not have. So, uh, Tarini, yeah, you yeah, have please tell uh, me. just uh, two minutes more yeah, before yeah. we invite the experts. Yeah. Uh, Keynote A18 mm. had, I think, 17.9 months as a follow-up. Yeah. And Interlace has 60 months as a follow-up. Yes. Interlace has a mature OS data. Yes. Keynote, we are still waiting. Second keynote had exactly 50 percent. If you look at a little percentage, dekh lo, whereas uh, less than stage three and more than stage three. The FDA approval is based on the subgroup analysis uh, of more than uh, stage three. While in interlace, we are debating ke because there were stage two be more the. Iske liye ye hai. I think we are too much of conjecture. We are reading too much between these. I feel that induction chemotherapy followed by CTRT has a mature data and I feel that probably would we would accept it faster compared to Pembro. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Just FD approval is only for the node negative, so then stage 3, stage 4, but not node uh, positive one. Yeah. No, if, we, if we look at the ESMO MCBS score for this uh, interlay study, so I think the hazard of 0.65 less and a uh, survival of uh, you know 8 percent os uh, benefit at 5 years so it comes as a a score so i think when we interpret the trial the the score is the, it's it's very good the data is very good especially taking up on the indian scenario anyone in the house wants to make a comment on what has been on the two trials okay if not uh, this is what i thought uh, will neoadjuvant chemotherapy be an integral part of treatment paradigm in the cancer cervix cancer inoperable I don't think that is now any more an option. Uh, the radiation oncologists have to get adapt with what is coming. Chemo, concurrent chemo radiotherapy appears second to both approaches, that's for sure. And we now have advancement that has happened after a pretty long waiting period. Inclusion criteria to me still appears to be the key and we have to look into details of these things. Kala study with Durva with similar setting was negative, so that is something we spoke about. For me, I feel that uh, for a, and that's what the even the uh, experts speak across the world that NACT is the approach. At least now we should be accepting it, and that after a long time we have OS benefit. But I st still feel a gut feeling that if you have a higher bulkier disease, probably immune checkpoint are going to come in, and that is where the integration will happen at some point in the future. I may be reading too much, but this is where I'm looking in, especially for Kala and the A18. That data is looks further convincing that more bulkier, you need probably even checkpoint somewhere. Just Please. one small comment for me, sequencing will be better in yeah. the metastatic setting because these are high risk when they relapse, I will have Pembro reserve. You will have just, something uh, left. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, so no one, one knows what's the right approach. One small comment yeah, from okay. me also here. Yeah. I've been doing this for the past 25 years and now it is good to have evidence that it, you, you should do it. So, so you have been doing new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by? CTRT. And it is a weekly chemotherapy, sir, or three weekly? No, three weekly. Sir, we discussed that, sir. <laughs> sir, thank you. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Can, can I? Uh, Ashok? Ashok, Ved, and uh, Sudeep Gupta? Ajo. We will request both the experts to please give your concluding comments. I think uh, a lot has been discussed. 
and uh, the points which are absolutely clear that in the last 25 years nothing happened. So we, we were doing only chemo radiation. And the science about the induction chemo followed by chemo radiation or new adjuvant followed by chemo radiation, since the data is mature, so I, I in my opinion, this is practice changing. And especially in our setting, where the cost of treatment is not going to be very different, and it's practice changing. So the poverty. So good evening. First of all, thank you to Amish and to Dr. Parikh for inviting me here. I think that was a wonderful discussion. And because I don't get to read too much these days, so I took down some notes on my iPad to speak. So I think, you know, both the studies are very apt. And let me first come to the interlace. Um, one practical point, at least in government hospitals, is that patients anyways wait for a few weeks to start their concurrent chemo radiation. So that's just a practical point. Um, and you know, you, it's hard to argue with, an, with a randomized trial that has mature data with sufficient follow-up to allow for relapses and is reasonably powered and has shown both overall survival and progression-free survival benefit. Just a small caveat though, so we conducted the neoadjuvant trial followed by surgery versus concurrent chemo radiation and EORTC performed an identical trial. And in both those trials, for a very similar group of patients, as in the interlay study, the control arm in our trial had a 75% disease-free survival. Here actually it is 64%. So, you know, there are some doubts that, you know, because a number of centers were involved, whether the quality control of radiation and whether, you know, appropriate brachytherapy. So, treatment of carcinoma cervix is still a little bit of an art. And if we look at the radiation oncologist is here, how you apply the brachytherapy also determines what dose goes to the target volume and what then gets delivered to the surrounding. But with all those caveats, there is still a little bit of a niggling doubt in our brains as to why for a comparable group of patients, the survival is measurably lower in the interlaced trial. But having said that, one should not sort of really compare across trials because that's not the done thing. And so therefore, I am wanting to convince my radiation oncologist in Tata Memorial that I think we must adopt the the interlace protocol and I think most of us have become reasonably uh, adept at giving weekly paclitaxel and weekly carboplatin and I think it's not a bad idea to do it. I mean it will be hard to hard to say that a treatment that costs next to nothing that has shown both an OS and PFS benefit should not be done. So that's as far as the interlace, yeah sorry. Yes, exactly, as in the interlace. Um, so now one more thing I just wanted to say. So you showed the neoadjuvant trial of gemcitabine. There is actually, there was another Mexican trial published in 2011, which actually gave uh, a weekly gemcitabine at 125 per meter square, plus weekly cisplatin concurrent with radiation, followed by gemcitabine and cisplatin adjuvant for two, two, two cycles versus standard platinum concurrent uh, CTRT and that actually showed a substantial improvement in both OS and PFS and I just refreshed my memory while you were speaking that at 515 patients. The reason, that's a Mexican trial and the reason why that was never adopted is very strange because you know it was substantially toxic thrombocytopenia etc and so on and therefore you know many patients could not complete even when many patients could not complete the pfs and os in the gemcitabine arm was substantially higher and it was measurably higher compared to the control arm so that was also something so because gemcitabine came up so i thought i'll just make that point now, uh, so my take is that we should adopt the interlace protocol. This, I mean, you know, it, it would not harm. Just a very brief point which you also mentioned about IMRT and 3D CRT. So the main purpose of IMRT is actually to reduce toxicity. Um, and therefore, inherently and in and, in and of by itself, it will not improve the control rate because all that you are doing is reducing the uh, uh, the doses of radiation to organs at risk. 
but we also published the parser trial in JCO. So Priya Chopra and I was the second author there. And we showed that the toxicity is substantially lower with IMRT. Now indirectly, if toxicity is lower and if you are able to adhere to the protocol and if you are able to deliver and I cannot overemphasize how important it is to adhere to radiation. So somebody said, I think you said that Mary McCormick told you that is exactly what I tell my patients and I request my radiation oncologist, I'm willing to uh, interrupt chemotherapy, but please go on with the radiotherapy. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to talk about, which I wrote down somewhere anyways. So I think that's about the platinum, about uh, gemcitabine, about interlace, I think it should be adopted. About A18, um, you know, I'm very fond of saying that whatever Dennis Lemon touches turns to gold. So you look at all the trials that he does, I, I don't recall a trial where, you know, he's one of the main authors and it doesn't prove an overall survival benefit. So, you know, there are some things, I don't know, I mean, I don't know why, but some, such, some people have all the luck in life. So similarly, I think Pembrolizumab is, was born with some special gifts. And so for some reason, you can attribute it to PD-1, PDL one or whatever. But you know, nobody knows the real answer, but there at least seems to be a signal that it is active. My own take on this issue is, I would exactly agree with all the panelists that with such a brief follow-up and carcinoma cervix is not something that one must judge at the 18 month time point, it will be a good idea to just wait for a little bit longer. But having said that, I would be extremely surprised if the curves came back together and you know if they crossed each other etc. I think it is the benefit is going to stay, the benefit is going to become more mature and even if overall survival is not proven conclusively because some patients may then go on to get it in the metastatic recurrent setting, I think there will be a clear trend where at least it will be numerically superior and perhaps superior. So I think it will it, it will become the standard of care in bulky disease, but maybe, maybe for now we might hold our horses. So I think I will just end there and thank you very much. So the, the, the cross trial comparison is always not a, not a great idea. But if you look at the quantum of benefit between interlace and the uh, Kino, uh, the uh, A18, how much is the difference? And especially from the Indian perspective, look at, is that difference worth the cost of, of we, are, we are discussing science for a moment, but then the practicality of that science also needs to be put, in, put into perspective. So I just think that, you know, for interlace, which is why I'm saying that, you know, we are comparing a trial with a much longer with three or three and a half times the follow up with something that is, you know, one less than one third of that follow up. It is possible that the curves might widen even in the A18, they may become more mature. One must not forget, I was just wanting to make that point, that although the uh, the the median follow-up is much shorter with A18, it is a larger trial. So its power is not that much lower. It is lower still because of the 18-month follow-up, but it is a 1,000-patient trial. Interlace is a 500-patient trial. And all of us know that the power of a trial is determined by the number of events. So two ways to Im increase the power of a trial are, is either to increase the follow-up to gather more, more events or to have a larger trial. So it's not all that bad and I think it will become, I, I think you were wanting to make that statement and I agree that it will perhaps be, be appropriate uh, to use it once we get more mature data. So Sudeep, so just please add please on please. to that, sorry, sorry Randeep, I'm taking your two, three minutes of the session. <laughs> <laughs> You said about the, uh, one minute, say, huh? uh, A18 had 1,000 patients study, while exactly 500 patients were in stage 3 and stage 4 arm. The other 500 patients were earlier than stage 3. So, compared to interlace, not, the number is not that high. Second thing is, response rate of immunotherapy plus CTRT is exactly same compared to CTRT. The earlier separation in 18 months, the separation what we are seeing, based on which, FDA in January 24 has already approved this combination. So my, uh, your comments on these three points and is FDA too fast enough to approve or should we have waited more? Because see what happens, like you know, uh, Vaid sir is the senior host in practice, once the FDA is approved, suddenly the patient's plethora of questions start coming 
कि सर ये तो गूगल में बोला है कि एफ डी अप्रूव किया है आप क्यों पेमरलिज्म ऐप नहीं दे रहे हो करके सी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नो वाइल वी ऑलवेज क्रिटिसाइज द एफ डी ए फॉर दिस ऑर दैट वी मस्ट वी मस्ट यू नो ऑल्सो पुट आर सेल्स इन देयर शूज सो वट दे हैव टू बैलेंस इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट दे आर यू नो अप्रूविंग अ ड्रग दैट विल इवेंचुअली नॉट प्रूव टू बी यूजफुल वर्सेज द Uh, versus a chance that current patients are being denied a treatment that will eventually prove itself to be useful so you see we have to balance i mean do you think that the survival curves will come together somehow that pfs will vanish and that the os will also not be there it is unlikely it may happen i'm not saying it will not happen but it is unlikely to happen if this was bevacizumab with all the history of bevacizumab i could have and and with its mechanism of action i could have imagined that but it is unlikely to happen here so you know we know from 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 all trials of immune checkpoint inhibitors that there once the once there is a separation of curves they are stable and there is a long tail and 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 it stays that way so i think the fda is balancing the uh, the the probability that it is frivolously approving a drug that will not be found to be useful versus the chance that it is denying current patients some benefit which will eventually be uh, proved to be useful so i think on the balance maybe you know fda has very senior and very relatively unbiased individuals there that, that, so i think it will be of, I, i would agree benefit, with them that degree of benefit is proven you know so it's it's not a futile therapy i just wanted to make a last thing uh, we never discuss alopecia that will happen with interlace will not happen with the pembro and it's it's important for a female and that is very important i think that will play a factor can we have a group photo